Welcome back to The Muse and Greg. Make sure you like and subscribe to stay across more great content like this. If you've got a dead solar blanket, you might think all is lost. And maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. Some months ago, my 200 watt Adventure King solar blanket failed and was replaced under warranty, but I kept the old one to see if I could get it working again. Today, I'm going to take you through how I ended up fixing it so it performs nearly as well as it used to. Before I start, let me warn you that this video isn't really intended for people with just a passing interest in solar blankets. It's taking you along with me through the diagnosis and repair process of the blanket and is really aimed at electronics-y people who may want to attempt a repair like this themselves. So please just understand if you're not in that category that you may find it a little bit dull. If you just want a quick overview of how these blankets work, check out my other video which is shorter and has a lot less techie details inside it. You ready? So here we go. So this is the, the plug that the output comes into. And so we lift up this just very carefully. So what we just wanted to see is if we're lucky just to have one of these wires coming off or something like that. So it doesn't look like there's anything obvious on these ones here. The other thing to take note of would be whether any of these so I guess if you have a look at the blanket here, the solar cell here, you've got all these little wires run through, and you can see that they are soldered, each of these is soldered onto this copper plane. There doesn't appear to be any damage on any of those. So I'm just going to check the obvious stuff first. Um, <clears throat> this wire here. Yeah, so you can see that half the conductors are torn off there. It's almost certainly still got continuity. So that's not the problem. Um, the next thing we'll just check is the output from the Anderson plug. Just make sure there's continuity between there and the board. The red one comes down to here. That's all fine. And the black one through to there. And that's all fine as well. Might just give a bit of a wiggle just to make sure there's nothing intermittent about that that's all fine all right and the next thing will be checking these and this we can put on that's fine that's fine that's fine and that's fine so nothing wrong with the physical wiring of the panel so given all of those electrical side of things are working fine. I'm assuming there must be one panel that's gone faulty. So I'm going to just disconnect um, all these joiners if I can and then see if we can work out which one's faulty. Right, so now these panels are all independent of each other. One, two, three. That one there is just going to the Anderson plug. And we should now be able to just put this out in the sun and check the voltage nature of these panels. So now we're going to just see what voltage we get off this, each of these panels when we get a bit of sun on them. Alright, so this is panel one. Put that upside down at the moment. Let's see if we can get things up on there. 3.8 volts of panel 1. Panel 2. We get that up in correct polarity. 3.8 volts of panel 2. That's a good start. Now, this is going to get a little bit trickier. Maybe we can clip on this band here. There you go. Oh, okay, quite. And that's negative. So that's a negative there, so that should be a positive one down there. 
It's interesting. This is panel three. Nothing on panel three. 1.84 volts on the other half. That was interesting. 1.8 volts would have expected another. 1.8 volts between there. Let's see if we can. one hand there seems to be nothing between that half of that panel 1.8 yeah, so this is panel number three 1.85 volts you there let's check this one here go back to panel one 1.8 volts there and 1.8 volts there 1.8 volts here and nothing on that side that's interesting that could be the problem but let's keep it looking. But how about we just do it this way the whole way through? 1.8 volts there, 1.8 volts there. Last two to go. 1.8. Oh, uh, yeah. 1.8. 1 1.8. 1 1.8. All right. So, that tells us that whatever the problem is, let's just double check that, definitely nothing there. So it's something between this side here, so it's something between these two terminals. So let's now take it back onto the bench and take a closer look. Right, so here we are, back taking a closer look at panel number three. I'm just trying to see if there's anything at all that looks out of the ordinary. There's a bit of corrosion here. Nothing particularly looks to be a problem. Seems like the way that these work, perhaps we'll step back a little bit, you see these all these two banks of wires. If you have a look on the back of it, you see that this is the negative terminal and that's what all those wires join up. So all these wires that are starting at this negative terminal which is on the folding handle they all start right here okay. So this is the start of it and those wires run all the way to here where they all run there and go to this pot and like that. So in actual fact this is one this here drawn onto the end of there. So you actually if you imagine this section here drawn onto the end of that, that's essentially what you've got. Just a really really long panel. Just to make it more space efficient, they just wrap them around. So the question is just gonna be this to there is working. So it would have to be, if that to there is not working, then it's got to be somewhere between here and there. Okay, so just to explain that again. We know this is the negative term, that's where, where the ne negative in it. We know the wires run along here, terminate down here, and then join down to here, and they also run through to that side there. Now we know that from here to here, we're getting 1.8 volts. From here to here, we weren't getting any voltage, which essentially means across those wires there, you're getting 1.8 volts across here you're getting nothing so the issue then is on this bottom part of that panel which is this section here so let's see if we can see anything visually wrong with that that one there looks like it's burnt through actually but it's not, nothing on this one's here Interesting. this layer here is the same see negative positive negative positive negative positive negative positive and this one here is the one we believe is, is faulty so let's try and check this. So it's about nearly a mega ohm, one and a half mega ohms, 1.2 mega ohms, open circuit. So the bottom line seems to be, despite that, there's something in here that's gone open circuit. And because these are all wired up in series, it means that if one goes open circuit, the whole thing goes open circuit. Which means, <clears throat> while we may not be able to fix this faulty cell, what we can do is simply bypass it. I've got this back on the table. This is now panel number three. And this one here is the one that's faulty, so I've now marked that just so we know which one that is. So, because of I'm doing that because we turned it around obviously here. So the, the way it was originally, it had these straps, remember? Going across here like that. This was that insulated one that needs a bit of work and then 
here and there where those two red wires that went out into the case of the solar blanket. So, our phone this direction goes through those cells from the negative terminal here, through the cells, through that mount there, through the cells on the other side, through this strap, through those cells, through here, through that strap, you see the pattern, through there, through here, across that black wire, through the cells on that side, then through this gate there, along the other side, through here, onto this negative terminal, through those cells, down through here, normally it would go through here, this is the faulty one, normally it would go through there, through this strap here, through there, across here, and then into the blanket. So this is the one we need to bypass. up. So the simple way we do that, remember we said the electricity if it's going from negative to positive, flows into here, comes out those little wires there, runs through this big strap here, <laughs> normally it would go through there, and then back down this wire. So all we got to do, to link that across there and that will then simply bypass that faulty cell which should mean that we should then get almost all of the original output so let's get the soldering iron out and get to work unfortunately the camera wasn't recording but all I did here was cut that extra excess bit of braid off so I've just chopped that through there tinned this braid here and then tinned uh, put, put some solder onto this copper pad and to solder them together the same way. So now we've just bypassed that fold one. So now the current will come through through this here, into this pad here, and then straight across into there, rather than going through that and then across. Now let's see how it works. Alright, so here we are. Got it out in the sun now. So if this is working, let's chuck it onto volts. We should be getting a reading of around about, I mean it's supposed to be about 20, 21 volts coming off the panel. Given we've knocked out one set of cells, it might be around about 18 or something like that. So let's put the positive on here. And the negative goes on here. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Bingo. Oh, look at that. 21 volts. Isn't that brilliant? Okay, maybe we'll just get a little bit less current out of it than we expect. Right. Let's solder these wires back on. Pop it back in its case as best as we can. We might not be able to we might have to sort of bodge it up for now and let's um pop on and see how she charges one down one wind cable to go Sure you hold it completely still until the solder has cooled down and it's gone hard otherwise you get a cold joint right so we'll uh, kind of try to work out how we're going to hold this together later but let's take it out there and see if we get any power coming out of it so i use this one as a reference panel which is the replacement unit we got it's a newer model slightly larger um, used to give a little bit less output than the, this one did so we'll see how it works so this is not great sun because you can see the sun's coming down at quite an angle but we don't really care about the absolute output we just want to compare them so with it set up like this you can probably see at the moment we're getting just over just around 3 amps okay? 13 volts going up and down a little bit so 3.1 3.2 amps just under 3 so that's what we're getting at the moment okay that's from our known good panel. Let's now unplug that. Put it into our repaired unit. And see what we get. Roughly the same angle. This one's probably a bit dirtier as well. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Here comes the current and it jumps up to 2.8 amps, nearly 2.9. So just a little bit less, which is what we'd expect, but it means 
it's that much more current than we weren't getting before. So I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. And likewise, if there's anything else you'd like to see covered, please let me know. Please do like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to grow and so you stay across new content as it comes along. Have a great day and I'll catch you next time.